a little bit more, a little bit more challenging. The importance of N in determining evaluation uh, methods. Now, by N, I mean the population of beneficiaries, the population of observations, the population of uh, uh, people, communities, whatever else, are benefiting from uh, our program. Um, and I don't want to get this too complicated, so I'll go a bit slowly and try and un un unpack it. In the, in the ideal world of evaluation, as the scientists and the social scientists would have us believe, all intervention populations, i.e. N, are large. We've assisted a lot of people. There have been a lot of beneficiaries. Because we've assisted a large volume, we are therefore able to say that any consideration of those populations is statistically significant. Yeah? That's the theory. All intervention populations are large, therefore statistical tests of, sig of significance hold. The beneficiary, or what the scientists refer to as the treatment group, yeah, the intervention, the treatment, and the wider context are highly homogeneous. So you've got a very simple population that's large, and you've intervened with a beneficiary group which is, is numerically significant. And typically, in this ideal world evaluation, budgets, political, other constraints are not an issue for sample sizes or the use of comparison groups. In the ideal, in those circumstances, counterfactual impact evaluation is the obvious way to go. You've got large population, you've got a large sample, everything is very homogeneous, everything is very pure. You can therefore abstract the effects of your intervention in the confidence that you have got you know, a good sample and the difference that you're observing is solely down to, purely down to, the intervention that you have made. And in those circumstances, counterfactual impact evaluation is the way to go. No ifs, no buts, dead straightforward. Emphasis on the word here, ideal. Because we don't live in an ideal world for evaluation, we live in a rather messy world. Very messy, very frequently, the numbers that we're dealing with of beneficiaries in the population are pretty small. And for that reason, counterfactual impact uh, evaluation is frequently unfeasible. And because of that, there has been this development of theory-based impact evaluation as the alternative. So let's just be clear what we're saying. When we have all of these things in play, large population, large beneficiary group, homogeneity apart from the intervention. We've got no restrictions on budgets. We've got no restrictions on data. We've got no restriction on the politics. In all those ideal situations, counterfactual impact evaluation is the way to go. But the world isn't like that. Therefore, we have to fall back on what we call these theory-based approaches. And there is a view that somehow uh, counterfactual impact evaluation is really the best and this theory based is a bit second class it's a bit shabby yeah but the reality is that in many many situations counterfactual impact evaluation simply can't be done now in in my 22 years of evaluating 23 years of evaluating i have done counterfactual impact evaluation out of hundreds of evaluations three times yep because those things are so difficult to those things are so difficult to achieve yeah. Yes, theory-based impact evaluation does not, provide a, does not provide a quantifiable counterfactual. We understand that. Yes, it does not provide statistically hard, statistically resilient numbers. Yes, it's actually got real limitations in deriving robust cost and benefit numbers because it's not statistically tight. But done well, done well, theory-based impact evaluation is a very pragmatic response to understanding the difference that's being made by your intervention, yeah? So the first message I want to get across to you is, although everybody may be talking about counterfactual impact evaluation as the way to go, it is actually quite difficult to do in practice, yeah? You need to be pragmatic, you need to understand the situation, yeah? And you need to understand that sometimes it is necessary to drop down into 
this theory-based impact evaluation uh, model. So in that first presentation, we, we understand that the growth of theory yeah, in evaluation flowing out of science, social science is now well established. That then essentially breaks down to those methods where you've got a small population and issues of heterogeneity and issues of budget. And there where you've got large populations which can be made statistically robust, where you don't have budgetary constraints, you don't have any issues of heterogeneity. And that then gives rise to this sort of spectrum of methods ranging from comparative methods, which are typically qualitative under TBIE, right the way through to experimental or quasi-experimental methods as social scientists would undertake it uh, for CIE. And then the different models and approaches that flow from each of these, for example, ranging on the qualitative side under here, intensive analysis of two or more contrasting cases, right the way through to formal scientific experiments where everything between the beneficiary group and the non-beneficiary group are the same apart from the intervention that you have made. Yeah? And that, you know, that, that sort of presumes you can get to a world where the one difference between an assisted group and a non-assisted group is your intervention. And you can isolate, therefore, the effects of that intervention. Yeah? So a lot of talk at the moment about trying to get as many of us as we can playing up here as we can, yeah? but quite a set of issues. But pragmatically, probably quite a lot of time to be spent at the moment by you, your programs, me, the stuff I'm evaluating around theory-based impact evaluation.